Hey developers, so today I am using my crystal ball and we are going to look into the future, into 2021, and I'm going to tell you my web development trends and frameworks you should know about in 2021. Now there is a lot to say about 2020 and all the craziness that has happened. So I don't know about you, but I am definitely looking forward to 2021 and I'm looking forward to all the cool things that are coming out and all the things that are gonna go back to normal. So I'm not gonna talk about everything that's happened in 2020, but we're gonna briefly touch on it and then I'm gonna talk about what things and what trends that you should be aware of in 2020 one as a web developer and that way you can prepare especially if you're looking for a job or just want to keep in touch with what's the latest and greatest that is happening hey and if you don't know and you're brand new to this channel my name is eric i'm a full stack software developer i'm also a big fan of all the different javascript frameworks and libraries i actually created a few cheat sheets on vue.js which is one of my favorite i'll put a link in the description below if you guys want to check it out yeah, let's uh, let's jump in. All right, so here is my web development trends 2021. Uh, I, I picked this this presentation because I think it just this is what we want to see in 2021. We want green fields. We want things to be great. And this I, I have a lot of hope for 2021. So t let's take a look. So 2020 as a retrospective um, wasn't a great year. There was a lot of change for a lot of people. I think the whole industry as a whole uh, shrunk a little bit. There was uh, hiring freezes going on somewhere between March and June and July for many companies. There was a lot of different layoffs. A lot of new developers who just got into the industry lost their jobs. A lot of developers who just graduated from coding boot camps and CS degrees had a really hard time finding a job in 2020. So my first thing to say is that, gosh, I am glad it is almost over and that we have a lot to look forward to in 2021. And my hope is, is that companies are going to start hiring again at a faster rate. A lot of new developers are going to get jobs. Um, also, I think a big change a lot of companies did is because you can't have these huge offices with hundreds of people in one place. So now every company has gone to this work from home model or many companies have, of course, not all of them. And this has really changed the dynamic of what I see in 2021. If you would have asked me in January of this, of 2020, what my predictions for 2021 would be, it would be a lot different now that we're in this, this post uh, pandemic world that we're in. So uh, I'm gonna touch on this later and also uh, every tool that we've seen, kind of big technologies like Zoom and Slack, anything that helps you work remotely has seen a big boon, boom in 2020. And I think that's going to continue in 2021. So let's just jump into the 2021 predictions that I have. And these are technologies and frameworks and things that you should be aware of. So I think, as you may know, that Vue and React are extremely popular and they're still going to be kings of the framework and library wars that we have out there. I don't know if you can call them wars, but just what's happening out there. So in Vue.js, I expect in 2021, Vue 3 adoption will increase. Vue 3 did come out this year, but I think a lot of companies are kind of waiting, a kind of a little bit of a wait and see attitude. There's a lot of libraries out there right now that are not compatible with Vue 3. So we've seen some companies uh, trying to take it very slow, not upgrading right away. You may be uh, upgrading um, small parts or using plugins right now instead of completely upgrading to Vue 3. I believe there's also going to be some more stuff in the Vue 3 ecosystem that'll make it easier for companies to upgrade to Vue 3. So I think we'll definitely in 2021, I think this will be the big year that companies will 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 upgrade. And just keep keep in mind, just because you upgrade to Vue 3 doesn't mean you have to use all the features. It's not like you have to rewrite all your components, although there is some really cool things that you get with Vue 3, like the Composition API. We're also going to see some incremental updates with Vue 3, uh, with Vue in just, just in, in general. So I'm, I'm assuming there are going to be some bug updates. There are going to be some nice quality of life feature updates. And I definitely think the open source community is not going to hold... Uh, stay still, we're going to see more updates, but we won't see any big major changes like we did in 2020 with the upgrade from Vue 2 to Vue 3. And I definitely keep seeing it, I keep been hearing it, people are getting hired as Vue developers. Companies, big and small, are using Vue.js on a normal basis. It's not just people in, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, in China or, or that, or anywhere in Asia. It's all around the world. Companies are continuing to hire for Vue developers. Now in the React.js world, uh, obviously React.js seems to still have, it's uh, it, it's still pretty popular. You, there's 
Um, definitely more jobs out for React developers than Vue developers. And I think in 2021, that will continue. So we're going to see businesses will continue to hire React developers. React developers will still be in demand. Um, also, I think the React ecosystem will just keep growing. We just I just did a video recently about, and you can probably see this is right here, this React server components, which is kind of a, they had a demo of being able to basically write server side code inside your React app. That was really cool. There's technologies like Remix that came out in 2020. I think this trend and this ecosystem of all these new and cool things coming out will uh, continue and we'll see that other frameworks like Svelte and Ember, they're still going to be there. They just won't reach to the top where React and Vue is or Angular too. I think Angular is always going to be that strong right behind Vue and Re React, but it's definitely not going to hit the, the popularity of these two. So front end will be the new full stack. So as the, our apps grow more and more complicated, we're finding that the tooling and the services that we have available are really, really powerful. And in the past, we had to create a fully, we would create like a Ruby on Rails, a Node Express, a Java Spring backend, and then our front end would hit these endpoints, talk to them and grab information back. But what we're finding is that we're getting so sophisticated that we can auto generate our databases now. We can have kind of a backend as a service. And we could have libraries that, that we use to log in and authenticate, and it's all on the front end. And it just takes, it auto generates all the code that we need to create our back end. So I think this is going to keep getting more and more sophisticated. And we're going to find ourselves, front end developers, in three or four years, being not just writing the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but also responsible for creating the back end API endpoints, for basically doing everything because the tooling will be so good and these services will be so good. We don't need to write a full Ruby on Rails back end um, app. We can do everything in the front end. And you saw this a little bit with the React server components. You've seen this with tools like Amplify and Firebase and all the different GraphQL. Uh, services out there that just make it super easy to create your schema, auto generate all these endpoints, and then start talking. So this, I think this trend is going to continue. You, there's more and more logic that's being put into the front end all the time and where the back end isn't as important. So I keep an eye out on this. I think this is going to be continue something that keeps continuing as our, our tooling gets better. So let's talk about Jamstack and static sites. And I think I mentioned this in 2019 when I was talking about 2020, but in 2021, I think this is just gonna continue to be big, uh, bigger and bigger. And what the problem is, is that we want websites to be fast and we want them to be better performant. And we're finding that the bundle sizes of our front end React and Vue and Angular apps are just getting so big that the apps are just really slow. So we're gonna be using tools like headless CMSs, uh, site generators, Next, Nux, Gridsum, Gatsby, uh, all these different type of tools to create super fast static sites. So we're going to have front ends that are that just retrieve information from these really simple headless CMSs that, that push information back. And then the site itself is going to be statically generated. So it's basically just HTML and JavaScript with each page. We'll have a different index file and it just be really fast. And I think this trend is going to continue on. I think a lot of people don't quite understand it, but this is the future. And I think this will be a uh, big in 2021 and we'll see more companies providing services that help with this. I think serverless is going to be more important than ever. Basically the idea of a monolithic app where you have one big app, it has all your services, it has everything you need to do. It even uh, has your front end in it. That's gone. That's the way the Dodo birds, the way that most people create apps right now is you create a front end and then you have these, you have a back end with, uh, with API endpoints. But I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a lot more companies and a lot more places use serverless. Uh, you obviously serverless is a term that people think you don't have servers. You definitely still have servers, but you're going to have some of the nice things about it where you're just going to be stateless. It's going to be kind of small. It's easily, easily scalable. It's like a small unit of work. So you might have like 10 or 15 serverless functions, but it can encompass most of the logic that you need inside your app and, and companies are going to save money and developers are going to really have to get on this bandwagon of understanding how to write these serverless functions, how to make them fast. There's also some problems with serverless how, of how long it takes to spin up and get up and running, but it's, it's just really nice to have. And also you don't have to worry about 
uh, you know, provisioning a server, getting it up and running, uh, dealing with updates, anything like or anything like that, because this is all in the cloud and it does it for you. So I think this is going to be continuing to get more and more popular, and this is how apps are going to be written. We might have, we might still have a back end Express, Django, or or Java Spring app, but then we're going to have more of these serverless Lambda functions that handle a lot of the logic that the app needs. And so more companies are going to uh, more companies are going to make this easier. So we already saw like Nellify now has this option to use serverless functions. I think a lot of the static hosting sites are adding serverless um, options. So I'm a big believer, and I think this will be the future. But it's just important to remember one caveat: it's not definitely for every scenario and every app. But I think it, it becomes. I think in the future, more and more apps are going to be able to use it, and more and more scenarios, it'll make more sense to use it. So this is an idea. I, I keep on hearing this in my podcast: is that there's this movement, this no code and low code, and I really think in 2021, these tools are going to struggle. It's just um, there's millions of dollars in VC money in these no code tools. You actually have to create a very complicated app, and basically, no code tools are like website builders. They're ways of not being able to write code but be able to create apps and I think it's just not easy enough to use um, you almost have to be trained on these no code tools there's no standards behind them so one no code tool is not the same as another and the only caveat maybe is good for a quick MVP or demo but at the end of the day you're gonna still need developers if you want to scale at any sort of rate these tools aren't gonna help you and I think people who are I, I think we're like five years too early for no code. It just feels like it's just not there. And I, I'm going to say that some companies are probably going to go out of business that try to sell this dream because there's just, it's so easy to get a developer to write. You don't really need these tools. I think unit tests is out. End to end tests uh, are great. So I, I've definitely seen this trend in the last, this year and maybe even prior. And I think this can continue into 2021 is that when we create apps and we want to test them, that we really want to test in the perspective of the our users, not the perspective of our developers. So being able to use an end-to-end -end test tool like Sp Cypress or Test Cafe where you can test every single piece as if you're the user going through the app seems way more valuable than small little unit tests that developers have to create to make sure that they um, wrote the code correctly. I, I'm not saying unit tests are going to completely go away. I think that would be the lowest on the priority, but the highest priority is to make sure that the end to end experience of our customers or the people using the app is actually, it does what it says it does rather than the developers, how they wrote the code. So uh, this is going to be a trend that I think more and more companies, I think companies that have this rubric of how many tests you need or code coverage tests, statistics and having that a rubric of the quality of your code is going to be is going to go away because companies that still use that i don't think it's a very good model i'm not saying throw all tests away yeah i certainly think you should still have some unit tests it's just i think you if you have a chance if you only have a certain amount of time i would go with the end-to-end -end tests first we saw in 2020 and i hinted at this at the beginning that work from home has blown up and all a lot of tech companies not all have decided to move their workers from offices to their homes and a lot of companies that would have never done work from home before are now realizing that working from home is actually not so bad a lot of us tech workers enjoy working from home we enjoy not having a commute and we can still um, we can get be we can be closer with our families. It's it's a pretty good situation for a lot of people. Not everybody. I know some people who have had to work from home this last year hate it and they want to go back to the office and actually see people. And other people like myself think that I want the choice to work from home. Maybe if I can work from home some days, it's great, and then go to the office some other days, it would be fine. But I don't want to have to always go to the office. I really like working from home. So we've seen companies like Facebook and Dropbox and a few others really, uh, really focus in on this. And now they're offering permanent remote positions. And I see this going in 2021. I wouldn't, I imagine that a lot of big tech companies, even a lot of small companies will allow their remote workers to stay at home. They won't force them to come back to the office when this, uh, this whole pandemic is over. 
and I think a lot of companies are looking at getting rid, will get rid of some of their offices and maybe have a smaller office for the people who do want to go to the office and allow everyone else to work from home because there's really no reason why everybody has to be in the office. I think in the past, people thought you're more productive if everybody's in the office, but since the pandemic started, I think everybody just realized that that's not necessarily true. So those are my predictions for 2021. Did I miss anything? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below. I love to hear you guys' comments. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, take care. Also, I will be doing some more of these videos this week. If you made it all the way to the end, make sure you click that thumbs up button and click that bell button and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be doing a few of these kind of 2021 lists probably in the next couple of days. If you guys like it, leave a comment below. Appreciate it. Thanks.